Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I am addressing comments once again. But before I do, I want to focus on this particular passage of scripture. As you can see, this is Proverbs 3, 5. And I'm going to click on it. This is on BibleHub.com. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And then if we read on, you will find the full scripture. And that's what we're going to read today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit. Notice that. That's going to play a part in today's message. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Okay. So we're trusting in the Lord. It doesn't say half heartedly. It says with all your heart and lean not on what your own understanding. We're not to lean on our own understanding when it comes to God, the people of God, the things of God. So right away, we got a contradiction between the worldly and the spiritual. In all your ways, notice all your ways, you're to do what? Submit to him, to the one true God. That means I'm not going to go over here and focus all my attention on what my parents are doing, what my children are doing, and others. I'm not going to throw myself out there to all these different people going against what God wants me to do just to stay in someone's good graces. I'm submitting to him like the faithful wife does to the faithful husband. And he, referring to the Lord, will make your path straight. So there are those individuals who are on some crooked paths, personally, professionally, they're down on their luck, as the world would like to say. Some folks are tiptoeing on that edge straight to hell. There's the opportunity, while you still have breath in your body, for God to make your paths straight, okay? You don't get to a heaven, a glorious, righteous heaven on crooked paths, unbelieving, being disobedient, trusting trusting in yourself and others, leaning on your own understanding. There's a lot of breaking of one's mind, body, and spirit that is worldly, evil, downright ugly that takes place before we make it to heaven and so that brings me to the this very lengthy comment and this particular comment was on the audio where I talk about how you can't rely on family members and friends there are those times in our life where maybe at one point, yes, we were able to rely on relatives to get us through situations. We were able to rely on family, friends, and so forth. But there comes a point, and somebody has to remember this. Don't click off this audio and forget about this, that you cannot always rely on family members and friends whether you're up today or down tomorrow and for some people they are so selfish in their mindset that they believe that family should always be there but we get older and we get tired and we go through our trials and tribulations and the tired can't help the tired come on now the upset and bitter and broken can't reach out to those who are upset bitter and broken some folks are so consumed with working because they got so many responsibilities maybe at one point they these people were there for others but when responsibilities take hold of people you're just not going to get what you used to get so let's 
read this comment written by Robert Grant. I've been a follower of your channel since the beginning. That's a lot of years. Ten years, so thank you very much for your support. He says, but I would like to share my story with you and hopefully get a response. I was a law enforcement officer and a very good one. Everyone in my community liked me. All right, now let's just stop right there. He said everyone in his community liked me. Now, you know that as you walk with the one true God, you know people don't like you like they used to. As you go through your trials and tribulations and they alter your spirit and your personality and you get older, those who once liked you don't necessarily like you, especially if you speak truth, okay? But back then, everyone in his community liked him, right? He said, I did God's work helping the kids and the seniors and people in general that needed help. I am 53 years old and I was married to a woman that I loved so dearly for 10 years. I've always trusted in my Heavenly Father through anything that happened in my life. That's a lot of trust, isn't, isn't that? I mean, we looked at Proverbs 3, didn't we? So this is a man that he can attest to trusting in the Lord. But here we go. There's a but in this. One day, four years ago, I suffered a massive stroke in my patrol car while on duty, and I suffered two more strokes in the months to come. Now, you can already tell that things are about to change and change drastically, right? All of us who have been through our shares of trials and tribulations we know that what goes up comes down pride comes before a fall I was left completely paralyzed could not walk or talk and was completely bedridden my wife walked out on me while I was bedridden nine months ago now that's a devastating blow to somebody who has done much for the community expected a faithful wife and just went about doing the best that he possibly could. Now, we don't have the wife's side to all of what happened and why she decided to walk out. But she decided to walk out when the man was down and out. Okay? She walked into the bedroom and told me she had found someone else. Okay, now, it was enough to walk out, but now she's got to tell him that she found someone else and could not take me being sick anymore before I was sick we had a great marriage so there it is right there you see sometimes we think we know people until situations occur the kind where we can't perform where we can't do our very best to keep the household running and to uh, fulfill our duties to put it lightly and a person has a choice a person has a choice to stay or go and this woman made her choice okay even though it hurts us to read this even though some would scream out that's not fair and not little you know what but at the end of the day this woman made a choice God didn't stop her from walking out the door he may have warned her about the marriage and what she was about to put on the line sleeping with someone else. But once again, it's her choice. God doesn't interfere with man or woman's free will. Let's read on. So before this man was sick, they had a great marriage. He says, I used to run five miles a day and worked out in the gym and was in very good shape. That says a whole lot, right? So he was able to do certain things, you see. When my wife left, I could not even get out of bed. And I found out that she had been having multiple affairs on me right after I had my last stroke. But all I could do is lie here and know what was going on and could not do anything about it. It was like going through hell on earth. And my Heavenly Father is the only reason I made it through everything that happened to me. Four of my closest friends that I've known for 30 years or more. Uh oh, here comes another trial. Passed away in that time, and I was not even able to get out of bed to go to their funerals. 
okay so we already can see clearly that this man's trust in the Lord is being tested when I read this I think of the scriptures involving Job you see he started off this is like a modern day Job when we read this he started off as this decent man right doing what's right and all of these things happen to him and when we look at all of these things we say did this man still trust in the Lord he's been tested he's been just losing so much well let's read on those were true friends right and would have been here for me and I would not have even uh, have uh, oh they would have been there for him right and he wouldn't have had to ask them yes every now and again we have those types of people that are in our lives they come and they go I think sometimes as I'm reading this before I go on we just got to be able to ride the waves of change so many of us we just want to stay sedentary sometimes people say oh I'm too old for all this stuff to happen or I mean I I done been through too much I can't deal with another thing and then here comes another thing you see and all of what we say and and what we believe in the flesh God comes along and he allows certain things to happen to test us in the spirit and if we say that we trust the Lord and we believe in God and we tell other people I'm sure this man in his journey has instructed people to do a B and C and now the very advice that he has given people over the years he's being tested on you see the things that he witnessed over the years when other people's relationships fell apart now he's in it the loss that he used to possibly say I'm sorry I can't believe this happened to you ma'am sir and now here he is you see that's why we can never sit too comfortably in our lives assuming that nothing is going to happen and we'll be okay and we'll be all right and you know God he won't put those kind of challenges before me you never know what God's going to do you never know the day or the hour you never know how old or how young you might be when you're going through a brother Job kind of experience you see and so it is humbling when we go through it is troubling to others but yet will I trust the Lord anyway you see reading on what I'm trying to say is through all of that I trusted in God you see and I did not ask anyone for help but no one in my family even my own daughter that is in her 30s did not even call to check up on me now see let's stop right there because you see God he wants us to stop at that one place where that man said I trusted in God when we go through when we start adding all of these other details about my daughter didn't call me my son didn't come around my mother should have my father he could have and everything else what we're doing is the enemy is moving us away from trusting in God leaning on him um, acknowledging him moving us away from all of that and causing us to lean on our own understanding so you swing out of this state of strength this state of growing with the Lord into a place where the where the enemy wants you to be bitter wants you to be like oh I can't believe these no good kids and and he goes on he starts talking about how he spent thousands of daughter, dollars on his daughter how he fixed his friends and relatives automobiles I mean I used to hear relatives say this when they would be down and out like after all I've done for these people and never asked them for this and you know didn't expect uh, that and yet when I go through they weren't there for me see God don't want us to be in that type of mindset and and it's scary because sometimes we go through even more because pride is showing up as we're healing as we're getting better and we start thinking about who was there who wasn't there yeah I'm stronger now I'm gonna call someone so about this I'm gonna tell this person they got a lot of nerve not calling or coming around yeah you gonna need me one day that's all pride and so we end up going right back down that merry-go-round of pain confusion bitterness loss sadness cuz God's like you didn't learn a lesson I'm still cutting away that pride 
I don't want you going over there worried about what this one and that one said or didn't say or this one and that one who didn't do. If you trust in me, that's where your focus should be. And I know it hurts, but you got to give those burdens over to me, says the Lord. You see, this is all the testing, all the trial, all of what we read in the book of Job only amplified in a modern day story of an individual who was once on the top going through the fires and losses of life only to come back around you see here's another another uh, situation here of trial he's on 50 di 15 different medications and you know with medications come side effects right and he says he's gonna be on those for the rest of his life not necessarily it all depends on what God wills, you see. So now here's the test of of uh, how much do you really trust me versus how much you trust the doctor and what the doctor said. I remember my grandmother was on a lot of medicines and then God, he started working on her. Next thing you know, those medicines were reduced, reduced drastically. And she was in her 80s when it happened. Uh, reading on, but every morning I wake up, I thank my Heavenly Father for giving me another day, and every night before I close my eyes, I thank Him for the day He has given me. I've always trusted the Father in my life, but what do you do? Here's the question, but what do you do when all of the people that you thought would be the first to help you? I'm hearing in the Spirit the Lord saying, eyes off the people. You put yourself in bondage all over again, worried about what people are doing. Is God God or are the people your gods? And I can hear somebody saying, yeah, but, but you see, no, no, there is no but, but you see, there's God. You see, people got reasons as to why they do what they do. Some people will be quite bold and tell us why, why I didn't help, why I didn't come around. Other people will simply quietly go away and it's nothing negative. It's just that they're going through their share of issues. And sometimes it's too much to have to look a person in their eyes when they're sick and run for them and buy for them and do for them. So some people mentally cannot handle it. Others physically can't handle it, but they don't tell their business. They keep a lot of things private, you see. And meanwhile, we may be on the outside looking in, being judgmental, being upset, being angry, but... God has a reason for why he doesn't allow certain people to remain in our lives. Good, bad, or otherwise. So, reading on. But what do you do when all of the people that you thought would be the first to help you didn't even try to make a phone call or come by to see if you are okay? We've already established pride gets casted away. We've got to go to the one true God with feelings of offense, insult, whatever we view other people's actions or inactions as and then we leave it in God's hands uh, reading on I'm starting to be able to walk and that's another sign too that he's getting stronger because now he's once again like I said looking at everybody who was there who wasn't see when you're down and out you don't think about all of those things um, when you're at rock bottom when you're on your way up, you start thinking about, oh, this one should have called me, came around. But when you're really down and out and you are lying prostrate before the Lord and you are just wanting God to perform a miracle, people don't matter. It's just all about you and God. I'm starting to be able to walk with the help of a walker now and hopefully in the next few months I will graduate to a cane if God so wills and ultimately be able to walk and talk normally again without anything and it's interesting that he said without anything and I hope that when that time comes that you will also be able to walk and talk without having the negativity the disappointment the upset the offense because people didn't call or come around you moving on um, he does say that he's a miracle of God. I believe it going through all of what he went through. Absolutely. And we give God all the praise and all the honor. It wasn't nothing that man did. Come on now. In the scriptures, Job, it wasn't nothing that man did, but it was God that brought 
that man out of his losses. And the thing about this whole situation is that this man can come up out of all of these things. He's grateful, right, to be alive. He pu He's pulling through all of this. The pain and suffering and loss he says he went through has made him a stronger man. And so part of strength is also being able to get to that place where you say, I, I, I don't need your empathy or sympathy. I understand you have a life just like I have a life. It's that unselfish understanding of others and why they couldn't do, why they wouldn't do. You see, there's that love that rises up in you and you hug even your enemy because you're so grateful to be alive. You're smiling at strangers. You're skipping down the street, happy <laughs> as a lamb. It, it's just a great thing to take place in your life when you have truly truly got through all of the dramas and traumas and so forth and so we are definitely wishing you all the best blessings blessings to you he says i have the lord to thank for that but i'm still unable to do any yard work so we will be in prayer about that he says he can't do his dishes or wash his clothes Hearing my story, I hope you will make a video on people who abandon you when you are in my type of situation. I'm completely disabled, but I still try. Thanks for your videos and God bless. This is it, your story right here. That even though you go through, even though you realize that people are not there for you, yet you will trust the Lord anyway. Going back to the scripture, trust in the Lord with all your heart. See, it has to be all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. We don't get into our own understanding when it comes to why people do what they do. In all your ways, submit to him. We're not submitting to the people. We're submitting to God and he will make your path straight. As much as we don't like to admit it, sometimes there are those paths that we went on, well, whether mentally, physically, or spiritually, that were crooked. And God says, I got to put you back on the right path. And sometimes the only way that he can reach a man or a woman is either to put them on their backs or take their monies away or do both. And we've had individuals that they can raise their hand up and say, yes, I was wrong. I went through some things. I felt like I was wrestling with God himself because I just couldn't get some things right in my mind. And my focus focus was on people and on what they should have, could have, would have done. And God took me through more trials because I was so focused on people. Yet, though, now I'll trust in him, says somebody. And I'm sure somebody will comment on uh, our friends comments so this particular article i direct you to it's seven daily steps to trust in the lord with all your heart it's on biblestudytools.com don't depend on you cry out to god run from evil put god first in your life check yourself by god's word listen to the holy spirit Rest in God's love. Okay? Real simple. But challenging to implement when your mind and your heart isn't where it needs to be. Some folks will admit I need to I need a cleansing process. So reviewing those one of the things that people have to understand is that if I'm not running away from the worldly, from the evil, from the ungodly, it's going to be hard to trust in the Lord because I'm too busy focused on the worldly, the ungodly. I mean, you got to, just like this point here, check yourself by God's word. I could say all day, I'm a good woman, I'm a decent woman, and, you know, try to blow myself up and all that foolishness. And at the end of the day, if there is something that I am not right about and I look at the scriptures, next thing you know, it's amplified and I'm like, no, nah, uh -uh. I'm not right. That's why God's taking me through these challenges, through these tests, through these trials. He wants to refine me once again. Jeremiah 17, 9 says the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. 
we don't know exactly what's going on within us, much less other people at times. Unless, of course, they tell us or the fruit is on their tree and we can see some things or even God himself shows us. But the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. It's beyond cure. Who can understand it? So we go through these trials and we get an examination of our hearts during these trials. My heart's not right because look at me. I'm so busy worried about people coming over here to see about me. I'm so concerned about what people might think of me. I want to let some folks know how I feel. And one thing about it, I'm going to let them know I'm not doing this, that, and the other for them. Okay, okay, okay. We get it. But you see, one of the things my grandmother said, and God rest her soul, she's gone. But she said, I asked the Lord to fill my heart with love. She would say this when she felt insulted, used, or abused by people. Because she knew she was on her way to thinking ugly, acting ugly, you see. You got to catch yourself, check yourself right when you're there in that moment of, I can't believe these fools didn't do this, that, and the other for me. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let me calm down. <laughs> let me, let me stop. Let me check myself, you see. So you're not alone in this. There's many people who come through and they got their share of disappointment with people. That's why we talk about the trials and the tribulations and the challenges, the good, the bad, and ugly, because sometimes you can go crazy not being able to truly express how you feel about people because you got the negative folks, the evil folks, and the folks that are looking for what's in it for me type of people who don't want you to talk about people. You see, if we don't come together and deal with these issues, then we will be had. We will feel like we're being hurt, being used and abused and mistreated. So I thank you so much. I thank you so much, Mr. Grant, for stopping by and sharing your uh, post. I'm going to make sure others get a chance to read that as well. I'm going to move on to these others. Vicki says, I've had to rely on friends to help me because my close family members don't. It really hurts, but I thank God someone is there to help. I'm in a situation right now where family members let me down, put me in a bind, and I'm hurting my way out of this because I can't believe this person will leave me stranded after all the help I gave this person. It's a very painful experience, but God has showed me. Listen to this. But God has showed me in due time he will send me help. The waiting is the worst, but I know he will never leave me nor forsake me like this person did. Thanks for your message. That's right. Like I said, sometimes we go through these droughts because God just wants to see. Are we really going to trust him like we told other people? <laughs> Here and there, oh, I trust in the Lord. The Lord says, do you really? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Then we find out, well, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm not trusting in the Lord as much as I should be. Uh huh. And so we get humbled. We do. So that is it. I don't want to stray too far off topic since this was about when you can't rely on family members and friends. And I thought the comments were worth sharing. Thank you as always for stopping by YouTube and I'm Enterprise 7. May the Lord richly bless you as well as those that you love. As you can see, I do view comments. Um, any comments that are disrespectful, um, downright evil, mean-spirited, what have you. Those messages, we don't give those a time of day. And uh, those people, the minute they say something that's not right, they're blocked. So they're not even able to um, even see the, the um, messages show up and their suggestions unless they're diligently looking for them. So thank you as always. I appreciate you. And may God richly bless you as well as those that you love. Feel free to check out the description box. And I appreciate all of your support. Keep coming back. We got a lot of topics to cover.